Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Nuclear Craft Overhaul Spotlight video. Today we're looking at overhaul turbines. Now I did uh, a video on the ranking cycle for pre-overhaul a while back that included turbines, but the overhaul turbines have changed a little bit so I thought I'd do a video spotlight on them. Uh, I actually already recorded a video about them but uh, it was a bit long and a bit confused so I've started again. I've actually got an open computer's little setup over there for a script that I've written uh, for just uh, some of the maths that involved in the rotor blades in particular. Um, I've also built a, a new reactor uh, and this one uses preheated water. Uh, preheated water is not available in, in the overhaul yet in survival. Um, you're going to be able to get it through the condenser like before. Uh, well, condenser and then heat exchanger. There's actually going to be another multi-block called the decay pool which we might use to get preheated water. Um, but we'll worry about that later because it's not implemented yet. And uh, this reactor with preheated water which produces twice as much steam is producing 2,537 millibuckets per tick of steam and I'm going to put that into my turbine which I'm going to build over there. And uh, again, just like with the script actually, uh, I will put the design in the pinned comment under the video. Uh, I believe I haven't actually even done that for the previous video, so I need to get 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 around to that. But anyway, uh, time to build our, our turbine. So the turbine, there are, there are multiple components to building a turbine. There are two puzzles mainly involved in building a turbine. One is uh, the puzzle involving the blades and the uh, efficiencies of the blades and expansion coefficients. And there's also the puzzle of the coils, which is a, a basically a, a simplified version of the puzzle that you find in the fission reactors. Uh, much more simple placement rule. So what I'm going to do is first of all work out how big a turbine I want to build. So if we look inside my inventory, we'll see I have some rotor blades. Now each rotor blade can process the same amount of steam. It's configurable, but by default, you can read through all the information about how it works here, but at the bottom you can say each blade block can process up to 100 millibuckets per tick of steam. So 100 millibuckets per tick per blade. Uh, now there's also an object called the stator, uh, which does not uh, process steam. So when you're coming up with your design, make sure you remember that stators do not process steam. The only things that contribute to the sort of steam throughput, uh, maximum steam throughput, is the blades. Now someone did say uh, on the last video or the one before that these descriptions are quite long on these uh, tooltips of various things. I would agree. Uh, when I actually write proper, a uh, sort of proper uh, documentation in the game in a book or something, then these descriptions will be stripped down quite a lot, and this will then be moved into the book, uh, probably with even more detail. So for now, the tooltips are probably a bit long-winded, but they need to be there because otherwise people would then want, you know, <laughs> wonder how they actually worked at all because they'd say there wasn't enough information. So uh, yes, that's why they're a bit long, but that's just how it is for now. So. I'm producing 2,537 millibuckets per tick of steam. So that means I need at least 26 blades. Now, of course, a turbine has sort of four sides to it in Minecraft, right? We've got left and right and up and down. So the blades are going to be a multiple of four. So 28 is maybe a sensible one. 32 is another sensible one. And in this case, I'm going to use 32 blades because, uh, well, the reason basically is because I have already pre-prepared a bearing two by two and if you think about it, I can have two blades on the top, two on the sides, two on the other side, and two on the bottom. That's eight per row of blades. So that's a, 32 is a multiple of eight, and so this works out pretty well. Now, you can use any bearing size you want as long as it's square. So you could use a, just a bearing, a bearing size and a rotor shaft width of just one by one. You can use two by two, so you have a two by two rotor shaft, you have a three by three, and so on. So the rotor shaft uh, and the bearings need to be square in, uh, in area but they can be any area all the way up to whatever you want. So I'm going to use a 2x2 two two in this case, but you can use anything you want. Um, and uh, this is going to be my design. Now, that means that uh, I'm going to have a turbine of at least length 4, because I need 32 blades. So at least 4, and it might be longer if my design includes stators. Now, why would my design include stators at all? What do stators do? What do blades do? What are the rules about placements of blades and stators? Well, if we look at the turbine controller, the uses of turbine controller, this will show us all the recipes for the turbine. And you can see by default there's three recipes. Uh, these two at the bottom are basically the same. Low pressure steam and steam basically have the same recipe. They both go to low quality steam. Now they have a base energy density of 4 RF per millibucket, and they have a fluid expansion of 200%. Meanwhile, high pressure steam, which is the thing that the reactor is producing, has a expansion coefficient of 400% and its base energy density is 16 RF per millibucket. So that's, that's obviously higher than that, but that's also because generally you get less high pressure steam than low pressure steam because this is your second stage after the expansion. 
So fluid expansion of 400% basically means that we want to make sure that we place our blades such that the expansion of the steam uh, totals to 400% by the time it gets to the end of the turbine. Now, each of these blades have a different expansion coefficient on them. Steel has 140%, Extreme Alloy 160, uh, 66 CMC has 180, and rotor stators have 75, which means that the steam actually contracts. Now, what we want to do is we want to place our blades such that, uh, first of all, the total expansion gets to 400%. And by the way, these expansion coefficients multiply together. So for example, if we had two steel blades in a row, then the expansion coefficient would go from 1.4 times 1.4, which is 1.96. So after two sets of steel blades, the expansion would be 1.96. And 1.96 uh, times 1.4 times 1.4 again gets you pretty close to 400% and that's why I used four steel blades in a row here. So I've got a design that I used right back in the first overhaul fission video and I've got four steel blades in a row for my high pressure steam coming from this reactor and uh, this is actually a pretty effective uh, pattern because we have 1.4 times by itself four times and that gets pretty close to 400% which is the ideal expansion rate uh, globally across the turbine. But not only is there an efficiency multiplier for the global expansion, there is also an efficiency multiplier for how close you get to an exponential expansion across the turbine. So at every single point in the turbine, there will be a certain ideal expansion level, and it will be an, an exponential expansion from 100%, so the, the beginning expansion, which is just 100, so 1, all the way up to 400. So if you have four blades, then the ideal expansion uh, goes from uh, 1, to the fourth root of four, which is about 1.41, to the square root of four, which is two, to the, the uh, uh, square root of four times by the fourth root of four, which I believe is about 2.82, and then at the end you have four. So you can see how at every single stage in the turbine you have this uh, exponential expansion all the way through to four. And that's true for whatever whatever size you, you build. It's not necessarily the fourth root of four. If you built a high pressure steam turbine which was eight long, then you take the eighth root of four and multiply that all the way through until you get to 400% at the other side. And what you want to do is get as close as you can to that with your blades. Um, now, someone called uh, Kurt Chekhov, you might have heard of from previous videos, built a uh, calculator to try and optimize. And in fact, I, as far as we know, it actually always does find the optimal uh, solution to this puzzle uh, using the blades. Uh, not only are the, the expansion coefficients themselves involved in the efficiency, of the turbine. There's also efficiency multipliers, just raw efficiency multipliers on the blades themselves. So these blades just have a, a raw contribution to the efficiency. Um, now, I should just I should just say before I go into what Chekhov did, um, that the expansion coefficient globally across the turbine is then multiplied by the average efficiency at each position of the turbine. So each position of the turbine has an, has, has an efficiency based on how close you're, you are to the uh, exponential expansion. And all of the, the average of all those efficiencies is some mean, some mean efficiency multiplied by the global efficiency. And it's also multiplied by the mean of the efficiency multipliers of your blade sets as well. So for example, if you had uh, a set of um, 66 CMC followed by extreme alloy, then your efficiency multiplier from the blades, the pure blades would be 115% because that's the mean of them. Um, but yes, what Chekhov did was they built a calculator that can do this. Um, at the moment, it sometimes gets the slightly wrong solution because in the overhaul, uh, the expansion coefficient, uh, sorry, the efficiency multiplier for 66 CMC got slightly changed from 125 to 120. Uh, and I believe at the moment they, they actually just commented only a few hours ago that they're working on a new version which will fix this and also allow, hopefully, possibly, for um, player-defined or user-defined efficiencies and coefficients um, in line with uh, how Nuclecraft actually works in the configs. So the reason I've prepared this open computers over here is because I've prepared a little uh, script um, that can actually tell me what the efficiency will be uh, for a certain set of blades. Now, what I've done in this script is I've used uh, capital S for uh, steel, I've used capital E for extreme, uh, capital C for 66 CMC, and then a lowercase s for stator. And you can download this and use it yourself. Right, so this is me recording after the fact because unfortunately I forgot how my own script works and uh, then an error propagated through the rest of the video. So I wanted to make this and make clear a mistake that I made and uh, want to explain to you how to use this properly. So the way that you run this script is uh, first of all you call Lua, 
uh, and then you type the name of the file. In this case, it's turbine.lua. This is my script. And now you write your arguments. Now, the first argument is the expansion coefficient. So in our case, it's 400% or 4, 4.0. It doesn't matter. It's all the same in Lua. Now, unfortunately, uh, I forgot what this first, uh, ex uh, this first number was, and I accidentally used it as the uh, number of blades. So I actually typed in the wrong number uh, for uh, this video. Uh, I, it should always be four for high pressure steam. Um, now for steel, 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 which is the uh, design we use uh, over there on our turbine uh, over there for our original reactor, uh, you will see that uh, this will print out all the different efficiencies and all the different contributions to the efficiency. So this first of all overall expansion coefficient, uh, this is the expansion uh, efficiency from just the, the global expansion uh, from 100 to 400 and that's 96%, which is not bad, it means you get pretty close to 400%. These are the local expansion coefficients, um, so we have, uh, or efficiencies, we've got 0 0.995, which is very close, and then you can see it, it's still high but starts to drop off, and that's because uh, the fourth root of 400% is 141%, so an ideal expansion across the turbine would be 141% at each stage, uh, but of course steel is 140%, so this starts to get uh, slowly further and further away from the ideal, but that's still pretty good. And then you take the mean efficiency here, so you add all these, divide by 4, that gives you a local uh, efficiency, uh, efficiency multiplier multiplied by the 0.96 up here and this gives you 94.1% for the expansion efficiency in total. Uh, my blade efficiency is just one because the mean of 100% four times is just one and you multiply these two together to get your total rotor efficiency and that's 94.1%. Now the unfortunate mistake I made is that after a bit of trial and error I found the following pattern. I found the following pattern of steel uh, followed by 66 CMC and then stator then CMC again, and then steel. But unfortunately, because I forgot that this is the expansion coefficient and not the number of blades, I then put five here. And you can see I got, I got mistaken to thinking that this was actually better than, uh, than this one up here. So I've got 0 0.949 here, which is pretty good compared to 0 0.941. But actually, if I do this properly and put the correct expansion coefficient in here, you can see this is actually worse at 0 0.832. Um, so uh, really what you want to be doing is playing around with a fixed expansion coefficient and then changing it up. So steel, 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 steel is pretty good at 0.941. Maybe we can think about something we can do better. Now, I just want to stress again, in the rest of this video, I'm going to be accidentally using steel, sick, uh, stator, sick, steel. And uh, that's what my uh, blades, uh, blades I'm going to be using in the rest of this video are. But that is a mistake. That's just want to make sure that's clear. But now we're going to see if we can actually find something that's better than steel, 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 steel. It's going to be very difficult because steel is very good. But the one hope we have is that steel's uh, raw efficiency is not as good as the other blades. So what we could perhaps try is... Um Steam, stator, sick, steel, steel. Let's see what that gives us. 0.928. Okay, but that's still not as good as the uh, 0 0.941 of just using four steel. So it looks like four steel between the four and five length uh, uh, turbines, it looks like the best is steel, 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 steel. There's a better one still, I believe. Um, the calculator gives me for a length of a shaft length of three, which um, I'm not going to be using. Extreme steel sick is the best one. So extreme steel sick gives me uh, this. Extreme steel sick gives me. Uh, 1.051, so that's actually really good. That's much better than 0.941. So that's the best one, uh, apparently, for 5 and below, according to the calculator. Um, as far as we know, the calculator is always right. Uh, always gives us the best one. So uh, in this particular video, I'm going to be building a 5 length because, of course, I made that mistake of accidentally putting um, of accidentally putting 5 in the, uh, in the expansion coefficient. Um, I did this by accident, and I thought that this was better than 4 steel. It's not, as I found out. Uh, but this is the turbine I'm going to be making, so if, if it looks weird, that's why. If you play around a little bit more, you might be able to beat it. Of course, if you just use Kurt Chekhov's um, calculator when it's out, uh, you'll find the best solution straight away. But this is just for people who want to play around with it, just want to play around with the maths. Um, you can have a look at the script, of course, as well, if you just want to know how it works. It's a very simple script. I'm not super good at Lua. Um, so let's just remind ourselves. Steel, 6CMC, stator, 6CMC, steel. Okay, I think that's pretty simple. So let's go and build that. And this will give us a, an efficiency multiplier of about 95%, which I'll take. It's not, it's not perfect, but it's, 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 it's decent. So we want to build out our rotor shaft. Now it's going to be five long, so that's one, two, three, four, five. And um, we have steel, 
6 CMC, stator, 6 CMC, steel. And that is our design. That is our combination of blades that we're going to place down. So what I'm going to do, it doesn't actually matter if they're placed, they're placed the wrong way, it doesn't matter if they're facing the wrong way or anything like that. Um, they will all get correctly uh, oriented when the structure completes, so just don't worry about that too much. And then on the top. Now, the rule about uh, the placement of blades is that you do definitely need, first of all, if it wasn't already obvious, you do need the same type of blade um, uh, you know, around the uh, the the rotor shaft uh, on each level on each uh, on each level, and you also need to make sure that the blades reach the casing. You can't have, for example, casing that's like up here, for example. So you can't have blades that don't reach the casing. Unlike extreme reactors, you've got to make sure that your blades reach all the way to the casing. Otherwise, the structure will not form. It will say you're missing some blades. Okay, so that's nearly done. And uh, is that everything? I think that's everything. So now we build the casing all around it, or most of the casing. Um, there are, of course, more things that we need to, to finish, in particular the coil puzzle. But I'll at least build out the sides with casing and glass. Okay, so I've built out the glass and the shell of the turbine. Um, I've left the two bearing ends open, so I've left all the blocks around here open and all the ones around the other side. Uh, the last thing I probably need to do here is put a controller on. You do need a controller somewhere. Um, I'll just put the controller here, uh, that'll be fine. And the way you turn the turbine on, by the way, is with a redstone signal. So um, once we're ready to turn it on, um, I'll put that lever there. So the final puzzle we need to uh, complete, it's a very simple puzzle, and it's the uh, coil, the dynamo coil placement puzzle. Now. Each of the coils here have a, have a conductivity multiplier, which is actually just basically an efficiency multiplier, uh, and they also have some rules about placement. So magnesium must be placed next to a rotor bearing or one valid coil connector, uh, beryllium next to magnesium, uh, this needs to be next to two magnesium, and so on. So these are all very, very simple rules. Um, now, if, you're, uh, if you sort of run out of rules, so to speak, uh, w once you get a few coils out, uh, there is a coil connector, which must just be adjacent to at least one valid dynamo coil, and then using the rule of the magnesium, you can just start again and sort of branch out uh, in a uh, sort of recursive pattern. Um, so if you sort of run out of places to put new coils, get your coil connector and place it down next to part of your coil structure and continue it. So uh, I'm not going to do anything complicated here. I don't need any coil connectors. Uh, I'm just going to put a magnesium down and uh, let's see what we can put next to it. I think beryllium. I think actually the best probably to do is just do beryllium and then copper. That seems decent. That seems like a pretty decent uh, decent uh, combination. Now, to work out the efficiency multiplier, the, the actual total efficiency multiplier made by these coils, uh, you actually just take the average conductivity multiplier of all of the coils. So you take this one, plus this one, plus this one, plus this one, plus this one, divide by five, and that will give you the efficiency multiplier contribution from this coil. There's also another efficiency multiplier, multiplicative. So you multiply the efficiency multiplier from the average of these conductivities, and then multiply that by the average uh, conductivity multiplier of this, t this, uh, this side of the bearing. And that then also multiplies with the uh, multiplies from the blades as well. So it all gets multiplied together in a sort of a total efficiency. So I'm going to do exactly the same here, pretty much. Um, beryllium next to copper. Now, how many coils do you need? Is there some maximum or minimum? You just need as many uh, as many coils as there are bearings, at least. So um, otherwise you'll get an efficiency penalty. So in this case, on each side, you need at least four, because there are four bearings here, you need at least four coils. So if I had only three, then I get a 25% penalty. Uh, but as long as you have more than four, you'll have no penalty and it will just be down to the efficiencies of the coils. Okay, now the last thing to do is place uh, inlets and outlets for the steam to get in and out. So inlet on this side and an outlet on the other. Uh, this can be placed anywhere on the, uh, on the front and back of the turbine. It doesn't necessarily have to be next to a bearing. On the back of here, I'm going to place a bin because I don't have any use uh, primarily for the, uh, the the exhaust steam because heat exchangers and condensers are not in yet and I just need to finish the side of these with a few more casing casing or glass on the front and back as well it's perfectly fine let's get that sorted out and that should allow our turbine to form you can see all of the blades uh, got sort of rendered at a diagonal 
position and it will start rotating once I turn the reactor on, uh, once that I turn the turbine on. So this should now be filling up with high pressure steam and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this bin and turn the turbine on. So you can see that uh, the blades are moving pretty fast. The reason for that actually is because there's a big backlog of steam. Uh, you can hear it going and uh, in fact uh, actually what I should probably show uh, very briefly is uh, if I just turn the turbine off for a moment and let this fill up with a little bit of a backlog of steam uh, you will see that the input rate will uh, have a little bit of an exclamation mark next to it when there is too much steam coming through. So remember the throughput of this turbine is a maximum of 3200 because you have 32 blades in there and uh, if we turn this on now you can see there's a massive backlog and you can see the input rate is 6400 and uh, that's 200% of the nominal throughput rate and there's an exclamation mark here. Now if you run at an input rate that's uh, above 100% for too long eventually your turbine rotor bearings will actually explode. And you can actually see, I don't know if you can see it, oh it's really difficult to tell but actually the uh, text here will start to go yellow uh, once you get close and then red eventually once you get close to the point of the uh, the bearings uh, failing and exploding. Um, so it's not a huge penalty but you obviously don't want it to happen. Um, and you can see the power output is pretty good, 57,000 RF per tick from 2,500 millibuckets per tick of steam. So um, this thing is uh, going pretty well, 79% that's because um, of course we have 25 blades uh, well, we have uh, 25 blades worth of steam coming through out of 32, so that's close to 79%, uh, and we're generating a decent amount of power. The dynamo efficiency is 97.2, and so that is the multiplier on top of our 95% uh, from the, uh, the blade maths that we did earlier. So that's probably, I don't know what that is, about 92%, 92% efficiency uh, from the coils and the blades together. Uh, there is also another multiplier, uh, there's two other multipliers to think about. The first one is uh, if you build a turbine that is far too big, uh, then what will happen is you'll actually get a penalty for trying to use a turbine that is too big, basically. Uh, there is a clever sort of leniency, uh, there's a, a smart leniency, shall we say. Um, the turbine will work out whether or not your turbine is as small as it could be as you were. Now this turbine is, sm is as small as it could be because we worked out that um, if we're going to build a 2x2 two two, uh, bearing, then our number of blades needs to be a multiple of eight, and technically, this uh, this uh, turbine can pro uh, can process 32 blades worth of steam, and we only need 25 or 26. But the turbine will work out that 25 and 26 is not an option. It's only it's only 24 or 32, and it will say, "Yep, you're as close as you can be to the next best number of blades," and so there'll be no penalty. And this is true. Um, for any turbine that you build. If you're as small as it can be without having a, a too high a throughput uh, for the blades to handle, then you have no penalty. The other multiplier to uh, think about is uh, just uh, basically it's a, it's a multiplier for building big turbines effectively and uh, the multiplier, the exact mathematical form of the multiplier is based on the throughput, the input rate of the steam and it's uh, effectively a double logarithm. So it's the log of a log of your input rate effectively with a few factors here and there to make sure that things don't uh, don't explode into negative numbers or anything like that. So the larger your input rate, of course you get more steam anyway, your power output is going to be proportional to your input rate, but then on top of that there's a double logarithm multiplier as well. And for this amount of steam it's probably about two. Uh, or maybe, I, I'm not sure exactly what it will, will be, you can just uh, put it through, a, through an easy bit of maths on Wolfram Alpha or something, and uh, the more and more steam that you have going through your turbine, that multiplier will slowly increment up and up and up and actually give you even more power uh, for each millibucket of steam. The reason that's added is so that it encourages building big turbines uh, over building lots of small ones, because what you could do is just build lots of small turbines with a very, very, very effective uh, expansion coefficient multiplier, uh, for efficiency and just repeat that over and over. So to counteract that uh, and to encourage building bigger designs with more complex uh, stator and blade structures, there is now this extra double logarithm multiplier for throughput on the power output. And I believe that is everything there is to know about turbines. Uh, I'm trying to think if anything else I've missed. Um, I don't think there is. If I have, um, let me know in the comments, and if you have any more questions, let me know in the comments, but I think that's everything to do with turbines. Uh, again, design of this reactor that's producing all the steam, and also the script that I made to just go through all those uh, bits of math to try and work out a decent, um, a decent blade pattern, uh, will be in the comments, in the pin below. Uh, and uh, I thank you all very much for watching, 
and I will see you in the next video, which will probably be an MSR video. Heat exchanges are not in yet, so you can't use the hot coolant for anything, but I will do an MSR video. Uh, it's nowhere near as complicated as it was before. It's uh, actually kind of similar to the solid fuel reactors with a, a couple of tweaks to the rules and uh, a, a big tweak to the way that overheating works and the way that uh, heat positive reactors work. It's much easier to build a heat positive reactor with MSRs. Um, and uh, there's a slight uh, quirky rule with, uh, with moderator lines. Uh, but we'll get to that when we do our MSR video. So once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you then.